Hi, I'm Janice Barnholtz Province, and this is a quick little tutorial on how to use our peripheral nerve stimulator or train of four device when we're using neuromuscular blockade in the ED. This is the quick how to guide or cheat sheet on how to use the train of four device or peripheral nerve stimulator that is in the Tupperware box in our code room. So, why are we using this device? First of all, we want to determine what the baseline is before we put a patient on a paralytic drip or a neuromuscular blocking agent. So in conjunction with our physical assessment, we're going to use the train of four device to determine the degree of neuromuscular blockade. So we push the train of four button and the muscle twitches are going to correspond with the estimated number of nerve receptors blocked. So there are a couple different reasons why neuromuscular blocking agents would be used, perhaps to aid with mechanical ventilation or to reduce intracranial pressure, but the number one reason we're using them in the ED is for our therapeutic hypothermia protocol. And um, when I say neuromuscular blocking agents, I'm talking about the drip, the paralytic drip that we're putting them on. So you know that these drugs, the neuromuscular blocking agent drugs, do not have um, sedative, analgesic, or amnesic properties. Therefore, when patients are on these drugs alone, it's equivalent to being buried alive. So they can still hear and feel things. And of course, if we're blocking them or putting them on a paralytic, we want to make sure that they're, we're supporting their breathing. So they're gonna be on mechanical ventilation as well. This is a, a portion of our therapeutic hyperthermia drip form, and you'll see that the vecuronium drip is the paralytic that we use, and we also put them on a Versed and a fentanyl drip. And then we're gonna record the train of four in the column there that's on our flow sheet. Before we begin, we're going to explain what we're doing to the family members that are present in the room, and then it's nice to also explain what you're doing to the patient as well, even though they may be comatose. Of course, perform hand hygiene, and then cleaning the equipment before and after use. We're gonna locate the patient's ulnar nerve, and I'll show you where that is in a slide following. And then um, cleaning the site with alcohol is nice to degrease the skin beforehand and then allow it to dry. In the center here is a copy of the little Tupperware box that we have our little peripheral nerve stimulator and the how-to guide in it. So how do you locate the ulnar nerve? In yellow there you can see the ulnar nerve runs up through the wrist and then travels across to the thumb. So the part that travels across to the thumb is the deep terminal branch and that controls motor and what we're looking for are the deep, um, the thumb twitches by having that deep terminal branch of the ulnar nerve stimulated. So there in blue is the ulnar nerve, and then we want the electrodes to be placed right there on top of the ulnar nerve, and it doesn't, it, sometimes it's a little counterintuitive that you're looking for a thumb twitch, but you're putting the train of four device all the way over on the ulnar nerve. So it's the ulnar nerve that we're looking for. We're looking for those thumb twitches. And if you see finger twitches, that is not a positive indicator of the train of four test. You may get that, but that's the muscle being stimulated. So you need to move it or increase your intensity until you get the muscle, the thumb twitches when the ulnar nerve is stimulated. So here's an example of the patient's thumb twitching and not the fingers moving. You may have a uh, finger movement as well, but it's the thumb twitch that we're looking for. And then after you achieve those four thumb twitches, mark on the patient where you had the electrodes placed so that you can go back to that same spot when you're reassessing. Okay, Janice, here it is. On button, train of four. Okay, there you go. So that was a quick little video on how to use our particular train of four device. And when we're using it on patients, what we want to figure out or determine is what the super maximal stimulation point is for that individual patient. So 
what's another that's a fancy way of saying that we want to figure out what's the least amount of juice or milliamps or whatever we set the dial to what's the lowest number we can set it at in order to achieve the most vigorous thumb twitch and at some point no matter how high the dial is we won't be able to achieve a higher thumb twitch than um, what the super maximal stimulation point is so for example if we have the dial set at five and we observe four thumb twitches, then we're going to increase, keep the, um, the electrodes or the prongs where they are on the ulnar nerve. And then we're gonna increase the dial to six and we're going to assess the vigorousness mm -hmm. of the thumb twitch. If the thumb twitch increases in intensity, then we're, um, we're going to continue investigating. But if the thumb twitch isn't any different than what it was at five, then we'll record the train of four TOF or um, the SMS, the super maximal stimulation as a five. If, however, we increase the intensity from five to six, we note that there's an increase in the vigorousness of the thumb twitch, then we're gonna raise it to seven and see if there's even more of an increase. If there's not an increase in the thumb twitch, then we'll record the train of four as a six. But if we felt, uh, felt or observed an increase in the intensity of the thumb twitch at seven, then we would bump it up to eight and then reassess the thumb twitch there. So wherever the thumb twitch stays the same, you're going to record the train of four as the um, lowest number that it took to achieve that. So how do we interpret the thumb twitch? Well, you can see that our goal is to have between one and two thumb twitches. And what that corresponds to is about 85 to 90% of the neurons being blocked. That's ideal for a patient on a paralytic drip like vecuronium. Having three twitches is about 80% of the neurons blocked and four twitches is about 75% or less of those neurons being blocked. Why do we even want to do this whole train of four thing? Well, multiple studies have shown that when patients are on paralytic drips for too long or at too high of doses, that they can either have residual weakness um, that never goes away or um, that the paralysis takes a long time to wear off. So we only want to give them enough paralytic to do the job it's meant to do. In the case of therapeutic hyperthermia, it's to prevent the shivering or if you were giving it for uh, increase in intracranial pressure, it would be to achieve that goal as well, not to have the bumps in, in ICP. Okay, so we're gonna turn the dial on. Find our location on the ulnar nerve. Also feel the thumb. Press the train four button. And we have finger twitches, which is muscle response. So let's, there's a little bit of thumb. You can also move it to troubleshoot, either turn it up or move it. And now we have thumb twitches. Good. All right, so again, here is the cheat sheet that's in the box with the train of four device. Step one is to locate the ulnar nerve. You can see it's the red line that flows up that patient's arm and then goes across to the thumb. That's our target. Step two is to um, get out the peripheral nerve stimulator, give it a quick little clean, and then turn it on. Find the patient's ulnar nerve, place the electrodes on the patient's ulnar nerve. And then step four is to assess the number of thumb twitches with our goal being between one and two twitches. And then again, mark the area um, where you had your electrodes placed where you were able to achieve the four out of four twitches. And then lastly, document it. Step five, while you're assessing the thumb twitches, not only is are you visualizing the thumb move, but you can also feel for thumb movement. And if you have finger movement and no thumb movement, again, that doesn't count as a positive train of four or thumb twitch. You have to move it or increase the intensity 
or the dial in order to achieve the thumb twitch. If you didn't, um, if your patient had no thumb twitches and you had already achieved that they did have thumb twitches and you marked it and you went back to that site and you, it's already up to 10 and the dial's up to 10, the maximum intensity and you're still not able to get it, Again, look at your clinical um, assessment findings, assess your patient, their cardiovascular, neurorespiratory status, and um, put together the whole big picture. You may need to be turning off your paralytic. And lastly, um, the interpretation we have right there, and then you're going to document that and uh, reassess every hour for the therapeutic hyperthermia protocol. So if you need to troubleshoot, you can always go to our website, the, um, the Learning Zone website, and in the far right-hand corner, you see that there's a Mosby Skills reference. If you click on that, type in peripheral nerve, um, you can access the whole policy on this. So if you have no twitching that's seen, think about rechecking your electrode placement, checking your batteries, increase the intensity. The patient may be 100% blocked, so you'll need to notify the team and do your physical assessment findings. And then just as a reminder, don't forget to turn off um, the device in between you so that you uh, reserve the battery for future uses. All right, let's talk about some nursing considerations as well. Anytime your patient is on a paralytic drip or receiving a neuromuscular blocking agent, we want to also make sure that they're getting sedation and analgesia. After we give a bolus or start the patient on a continuous infusion, or if it's changed, we want to retest the train of four um, after about 10 to 15 minutes to see where we are. And then in order to prevent ventilator-associated pneumonia, we want to keep the head of bed elevated unless it's contraindicated. We want to prevent pressure ulcers, so turning our patients and putting them on a pressure reduction mattress is a good idea. Um, we want to be thinking about eye protection as well. These patients aren't blinking either, so we can lubricate the eye. And then if your patient has a pacer, be very careful not to put the uh, train of four device anywhere near the lead wires there. Of course, you're going to be doing patient and family education. You're going to document the train of four, and uh, we talked about how to achieve the super maximal stimulation point. So document that and the nerve tested. We didn't talk about the two other nerves that can be tested, which are at the forehead and um, the ankle, but you can find more information on those in the Mosby, Mosby Skills reference. Um, but what we traditionally do here and um, what the recommendation is, is to use the ulnar nerve. Of course, you're also going to include your assessment data from your neuro and your respiratory and your cardiovascular exams and document any unexpected outcomes, which would be like the skin integrity is impaired um, where the ulnar nerve is, the fingers twitch when the ulnar nerve is stimulated as a result of artifact. So again, we're looking for those thumb twitches. So the fingers being stimulated versus the thumb is um, significant for direct muscle stimulation rather than the ulnar nerve stimulation. And then another unexpected outcome would be resumption of four twitches does not um, occur within two hours after discontinuing the neuromuscular blocking agent. So that'll probably be over in the ICU, but um, if in the ED uh, we're turning off the drip, um, we'd want to look for that and make note of it as well. And then any additional interventions we do. All right, good luck using the train of four um, during your next neuromuscular blockade usage.